Hey fellow back air boyers, Nick here. Now today I'm going to do a little video on speed. I've been getting a lot of questions on how fast PVC bows are. And that's a hard question because when you ask how fast are PVC bows, you're not asking how fast is a particular bow, how fast is a particular style of bow. You're asking basically the general speeds of a whole genre. It's like saying how fast are compounds, how fast are self bows. How fast are solid fiberglass bows? And it's hard to say because there are lots of different things within each genre that determine speed and determine efficiency, determine all these different things. That said, comparing when you compare bows, I like to compare PVC bows to wooden self bows. That's where they seem to fit the best, and even then, it's not completely apples to apples. There's one thing to keep in mind is that when you make a PVC bow out of a piece of pipe, you're restricted by the amount of material in here. When I taper flatten this bow, I'm not removing any material. Now the pipe becomes weaker the flatter it is, and it acts like I'm taking away material, but in, rea in reality I haven't taken anything away. This has the same amount of mass right in the middle as it does right here before this taper starts. So, really, the design itself is still inefficient. It's more efficient than a straight pipe, but it's still inefficient compared to a well-tillered longbow or a well-tillered bow, a recurve bow that has a good thickness and width taper. Basically, you have less material at the tips and at the center. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that you can't really compare PVC bows apples to apples with wood because PVC is so flexible. That's one of its weaknesses but it turns out to be an amazing strength because realistically you know, this bow is I believe 57 inches. 56 or 50, for 57 inches knocked them off. If you're making a wooden bow this is fairly difficult to do to get a 45 pound bow that's well balanced to come out this short. Now, this bow is somewhere in the realm of about 43 or 44 inches knock to knock. That's very, very difficult to get a full 28 inch draw in any wood. It takes a really skilled boyer to pull that off. Both of these bows were made by other people. I didn't make this. This was made by my friend Ken, and this was made by Bruce. You can actually, I've done a review on one of his bows before, and you can check his store out because he's got pretty good bows. One thing to keep in mind is that this bow, even though it's fairly heavy, or PVC would be heavy if you compared a wooden bow to a PVC bow, this performs about as well as a wooden bow this size. You would compare a wooden bow this size to a PVC bow this size, and that's where the benefit comes in. This has such little mass overall that it gains efficiency, even though it loses efficiency by being so short. Same thing with this. This bow, you would probably compare it to a bow about a foot longer, a wooden bow about a foot longer than this. That being said, though, one-inch pipe bows, unless you do something radical to the design, are usually very inefficient just because they're so heavy. The three-quarter inch bows though, because they're so light, are much more efficient. And I'm gonna kinda test that out today. So these bows are made by other people. They both pull 45 pounds at 28 inches. And actually, this bow stores more energy. I went ahead and I measured these out. This stores about 39 foot-pounds of energy. And this stores about 47 and a half foot-pounds of energy. So this is storing more energy. This is storing less energy. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take you guys to the chronograph and we're going to test these bows out. We're going to figure out how fast they are at what I call my baseline, which is 10 grains per pound. So with a 450 grain arrow, that's going to be the number we're going to use to determine its efficiency. But we'll also shoot some heavier arrows and some lighter arrows just so you guys can see what they do when you change the grain per pound. So let's get started. 
All right, so we're going to start off with Ken's bow, so this one, and I'm going to be shooting 10 grand per pound arrows. I'm going to be going for six readings so we can figure out the average. I may not get a good reading every time because it's kind of weird. Blue skies, but it's not terribly bright today. So we'll see how it goes. I might have to reshoot a couple times. Here we go. Three. Not coming that. Four. Five. And six. All right. All right, there we go. So now we're going to shoot a couple other arrows and see what we get. So first off, we'll go heavy. Here is a 12 grain per pound arrow. And here is a 14 grain per pound arrow. And now for the super light. Well, not super light. So here is a 100, I mean, not 100, what am I talking about? <laughs> Eight grains per pound on here. So eight grain per pound. And now six grains per pound. So there you go. You know, grains per pound makes a difference. So now we've got our baseline. I can go figure out. Uh, how efficient this bow is. So now we're going to go test Bruce's bow. Alright, so here's Bruce's bow and I'm going to start off with 10 grains per pound. We're going to go for six readings. Hopefully I don't have to repeat too many times. Here we go. One, two, three.
four. Five. And six. Woo! Okay. <clears throat> Finally. All right. So now, 12 grains per pound. I just blew up the knock of my arrow. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go grab another 550 grain arrow, and I'll be right back. So I've got another 550 grain arrow, so let's try this again. So this is 12 grains per pound, approximately. Okay, there we go. And now for a 14 grain per pound. There we go. All right. Now for the eight grain per pound arrow. There we go. And now for six grains per pound. And there you have it. So I'm gonna go up and tally the results, figure out the efficiencies. And we'll go from there. All right, so the results are in. This bow, the three quarter inch bow, is much faster and much more efficient. With a 10 grain per pound arrow, it's shooting 164 FPS, which means it's delivering 27 foot pounds. You know, an output of 27 foot pounds which means that it's a efficiency of 72%. That's really good. 72% efficiency is pretty good, all things considered. This bow is much slower. At, with a 10 grain per pound arrow, it shoots 145 FPS on average, which means it's putting out 21 foot-pounds. That brings it to a 54% efficiency, which is pretty bad. You know, I, I try to go for, you know, 50 or better. 50 is pretty slow, but, you know, all things considered, it's not too bad. It's still pretty inefficient, though. Now, there are a lot of things that are going to change the efficiency. This bow is pretty efficient. Now... If I were building a bow like this, out of three-quarter inch pipe, my main goal would be finding ways to make it more stable at a full draw length. How to decrease stack, how to uh, make it more stable so that it's not going to fail on me. Because this bow is getting close to its limits. Now with a wooden bow, you're usually pushing the limits of your wood anyway. It kind of came out weird. But you're pushing your limits, and you're doing the same with this. You're getting close to pushing the limits. This bow could break on me if I did something wrong. This bow, on the other hand, is inefficient, but it's also super stable. There really isn't much 
I can do to this aside from maybe whacking it against a tree a few times that's going to cause it to fail on me when I need it to perform. That said, with a bow like this, when you're designing one inch pipe bows, you want to maximize efficiency. You want to find ways of decreasing limb mass, tip mass. How do you increase stored energy? So you add recurves to bring up the amount of stored energy, that way your output is better. And there are just all different types of things. And I wanted to add a little side note because I've seen, I've started to see some speed tests, especially with lower weight bows. With a one inch pipe bow, this is getting 54% efficiency. If I were to lower the weight, it's kind of counterintuitive. Most of the times with like, say if I were making self bows, if I had a 45 pound bow, if I wanted to make it a, a 35 pound bow, I would remove material until it got lighter. With PVC, you have to add material to make it lighter. So you're making it more inefficient bow. So a 35 pound bow with one inch pipe, you're probably looking at about 30% efficiency. It's going to be a very inefficient and very slow shooting and sluggish bow. There are ways you can bump up that number, but it's still going to be very low. Whereas a 35 pound bow made out of three quarter inch pipe is going to be a lot more efficient. Less efficient than this, but still much more efficient. You're still going to be in the 60 to 70 pound range. I mean, 60 to 70 percent efficiency range, which is good. That being said, if you really want to chase efficiency, you need to increase either increase stored energy for your weight on these, or you're going to have to increase your weight because with PVC bows, as you increase your weight, you're decreasing your overall mass because you're making your bow shorter. One thing I wanted to show you guys as far as design goes, these bows are fairly similar in their design. They both are reflexed, um, deflexed at the handle and have recurves. You can see that. So this design, while it produces a fairly smooth shooting bow, it's actually going to be bringing down efficiency a little bit. If you can get a bow that's reflexed in the handle and has recurves, you're going to increase your efficiency, but you're going to decrease your stability. On a bow like this, you can do that and it's not going to be a big problem. A bow like this, you're probably not going to get that much of a gain, so it's probably not going to be worth it. But really, it's, you know, just each bow is going to be different. Every bow is going to be, you know, a different experience, a different adventure, especially when you're trying to maximize efficiency, maximize speed. Each bow is going to be a new opportunity to get faster, to get better, to get more stable. And these are all things that we can work on together. So, you know, to all of you PVC boyers out there, I've been seeing a lot of guys starting to chase speed and chase efficiency. So I'm going to kind of do my part. I've got these bows recorded. I'm going to go through my collection. I'm going to start recording all the efficiency and speed readings on all the bows I have. Every time I make a new bow, I'm going to uh, publish the kind of all the information on it. It's force draw curve, its speed at different weights of arrow, and uh, its efficiency. And that way we can kind of start getting on the same page and figuring out where can we, what can we do to make bows faster. And I'd encourage all of you guys to check out the Google Plus community. There's a lot of great stuff happening there. And check out Tim's channel. Tim is also chasing speed quite a bit. So there it is. I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.